Last night at Tribal Council was very difficult. Um, today I feel uh, pretty good, though. Uh, I feel a little weak, but I've had some food and some water, and so physically I feel a little better. Emotionally, um, I feel pretty relieved. Um, I'm sad that I'm out of the game because I really wanted to play, but um, I didn't want to play under the circumstances I was playing under. And um, I, I didn't want to go, but it, emotionally it was just a struggle, and so today I feel like a burden's been lifted. Tribal Council, um, I didn't expect that to happen last night, but um, Jeff asked me a question, and I had to tell him the truth. I mean, it was, it was in, in my best interest to, to speak my truth, and I knew that it would offend Judd. Um, and I knew in Judd's typical fashion he would explode, as he typically does. But I was um, being true to myself. I was being honest. I was being factual. And so I spoke the truth. When Jeff put out my torch, it was both sadness and relief. Um, sadness that the game was over for me because it was, it was a great um, almost two weeks. Um, but it was a relief because the previous couple days had been horrible. So getting out of the, the very dysfunctional unit that I was working in, or tribe, um, it was a relief getting out of there. I am disappointed. I'd hope the game would um, play out a little bit better than it did. I was certainly ready to deal with some manipulators, but I wasn't ready to or anticipate dealing with someone like Judd. Um, so I was disappointed in that. I was disappointed that I would have to... Um, battle like that uh, in this game. I'm sure everybody knows someone like Judd. And you can take them in small doses. But when you're living, sleeping, breathing, and depending on each other for survival, someone like Judd is absolutely a bomb going off. Not to mention the fact you're dehydrated. I hadn't had food for three days. I had three orange slices a day. That's all I had had. So um, that kind of circumstances, living with someone like Judd, it's absolutely impossible. Um, perception does play a very big part of this game. And as far as what I believe the perception of me was, is that I was a strong woman, much the motherly, nursing, nurturing kind. But... Um, on the first day of the new tribe mix, um, it was within two hours that Judd was up there um, and talking with Jamie and Stephanie. So I have no doubt that I had no chance from the very beginning. I didn't have any confrontation on the first day of the mix um, or even the second. Um, and I let Judd, you know, Judd went around you know, being Judd, and I really didn't oppose him too much. But we already knew that um, it was five to three and that we were marked. So it wasn't a matter of uh, perception. It was a matter of numbers. They would have the majority as soon as Judd flipped over. So our, our days were numbered. My favorite part of the whole Survivor adventure was the first two days the trek through the jungle. The trek through the jungle was incredible. It was tough as I can ever imagine anything being. But that's when I felt my best, and that's when I feel like I um, performed the best. It was just, it was awesome. I would do it again. It was the best part of Survivor. The oddest thing I have to say is one night uh, we were sleeping underneath the canopy. I had tribe members to both sides, so I thought I was a safe guy in the middle, of course. A tarantula slides down the canopy and drops on my leg. So I sit up and I brush it off, or at least I thought I did. So I lay back down. 
So I lay back down, and I'm pretty much covered from head to toe. And then all of a sudden, it hops on my face. I jumped up, and I swatted it off as quickly as I could. And I yelled to the rest of the tribe, you know, there's a spider in the tent. Well, of all the tribe members, Jamie, the biggest guy of all, flipped out, jumps up, sits up. They said, are you sure? I said, I'm sure there's a spider in the tent. Well, I thought I had flipped him off. What he did was he jumped to the top of my head. And then when I realized he was on the top of my head, I flipped him off and he jumped on Jamie, who went sailing out of camp, <laughs> only to find a rodent at the fire waiting for him. So that had to be the oddest moment of, of, of this survivor adventure for me. Lack of food hits you so profoundly it's it's unimaginable and we don't get any food out here with the only food we get we either have to find ourselves or we have to get it in reward challenges um, first and foremost keeping ourselves hydrated was an issue because boiling the water was a tough a tough problem uh, just keeping up with fluid once we could do that then trying to find fish was literally impossible what surprised me, though, was I thought I would have hunger pains in my stomach, and I didn't. I really didn't have hunger pains. The problem becomes is you just become so weak from not having any nourishment that just standing up, you have to wait a few minutes because you're so dizzy, you just want to fall over. And you're so weak just to walk down to get water. Um is just great effort then you have to lay down and take a nap and the heat out here is so unbearable it soaks you of everything so not having food um, is is it's not like anything I ever ever could have predicted but it's not a painful thing it's more just an overall body weakness where you feel like you just melt to the ground there's a lot of feelings that come at the end of this game being voted off the way I did, um, there was a lot of hurt in that uh, tribal council. It was it was very hurtful. Um, but I also came out with a great deal of pride because I spoke the truth and I spoke based on facts and I kept my integrity about me. So I have a great deal of pride about how I played the game. Um, and it was an incredible, incredible adventure and I learned so much about myself. So at the end of the game, I'm sorry the adventure is over, but I gained so much about myself and met so many wonderful people that um, I feel really good about it.